a friend. So recently, we figured out how to detect if our ship has already been hit by something. This week, let's work out how to avoid being hit by something instead. We're going to do that using a joystick and an LED dot matrix. The joystick will move us out of the way, and the dot matrix will display our flight path. The joystick module is an analog device with two potentiometers, X and Y. A potentiometer is a manually adjustable variable resistor. The resistance of it changes as you turn the dial. X is for the horizontal movement, and Y is for the vertical movement. The other pins are VCC, ground, and a switch. Depending on the type of joystick you have, this could either say B or S. The maximum value for each potentiometer is 1023. The home position for both X and Y is half of that value, 511. Moving the joystick horizontally to the left creates a zero value for X and 511 value for Y. Horizontally to the right creates a 1023X value and 511Y value. Vertically up creates a 1023Y value and 511X value, and vertically down creates a 0Y value and 511X value. First let's light up some LEDs with the joystick just to see how it works. We need 13 jumper wires, 5 of them male to female, 4 LEDs, the joystick, and 4 resistors. First we're defining variables to set our switch pin and the X and Y pins. The switch pin is connected to a digital pin on the board because it's only going to have one of two values, pressed down or not. The X and Y values are going to vary between 0 and 1023, so we're connecting those to analog pins. We also need to set the pins for each LED. In the setup, we're setting the switch pin as an input, initializing the serial monitor, and setting pin modes for the LEDs. In the loop, we're first just going to print the state of the pins to the serial monitor. First it'll print whether the switch pin is pressed or not. It'll print 0 if it's not and 1 if it is. Then it will print the horizontal and the vertical values of the joystick. And then each batch of those print statements is going to be delayed by 500 milliseconds. Then we can write to the LEDs. The LEDs are going to turn on individually depending on where we have the joystick pointed to. Under the else if statement for the switch pin, we're stating that if the switch is pressed down, then all the LEDs are going to come on. And then finally under else, if none of those things are true, we haven't moved the joystick anywhere, and we're not pressing the switch down, then the LEDs will just stay off. So now when we move the joystick up, then this top LED comes on. Left, right, down, the corresponding LEDs all come on. If we press down the switch, then all of them will come on. And when we're not doing anything, they just stay off. Now let's control the LED matrix with the joystick. We need an 8x8 LED dot matrix, the joystick, 12 jumper wires, 10 of them male to female, and the breadboard. To do this, we're going to use the LED control library. This library is for the Mac 7221 and Mac 7219 drivers. To get the library, go to Tools, Manage Libraries, search LED Control, and an Install button will pop up when you hover over it. LED Control Matrix is creating an object that's referencing our physical LED matrix display that uses the LED Control library. It has four parameters. The first three are the pin numbers on Arduino that are connected to the display pins, and then the fourth one is for the number of devices that you're using. For those first three, you don't have to initialize the pins as inputs or outputs or set them to an int variable like we would normally do. The library handles all that for you. I'm setting data in to 10, chip select to 11, and clock to 12. For that fourth parameter about the number of devices, one 8x8 matrix counts as one device. So for a single 8x8 matrix, we need to put one for that. Even though I'm technically using a 32x8 matrix for this, I'm just counting it as one for the project. In the setup, the shutdown function has two parameters, the address, which is an integer value, and the status, which is a Boolean value. The address is the index of each device, and it can go up to four. It starts at index zero, and the second one is one, third one three, nope, third one two, up to four. The address is the first argument of every function that's going to set a feature on a device. So that's also what the zeros in the other functions are referencing. A status of true puts the device in power down mode and false is for normal operation. 
Set intensity takes the address and the brightness level, which can be between 0 and 15, with 15 being the brightest. Next, we're using the map function to scale down these values. An 8x8 LED matrix is indexed from 0 to 7. So for the horizontal movement, we're mapping the minimum analog value of 0 to the display's index 0, and the maximum analog value of 1023 to the display's index 7. For the vertical movement, analog value 0 is mapped to index 7, so if it's pointed down, then the bottom LED will turn on, and analog value 1023 is mapped to index 0, so if it's pointed up, then the top LED will be on. There are four parameters in set LED, the address again, and then an integer value for row, an integer value for column, and a boolean value for state. Let's ignore this x and y map for just a second and then use a simple number in place of them. On an 8x8 matrix, if the very last LED of the fifth row is lit up, that would translate to a row and column value of 4, 7. The first row is index 0, so the x value for the fifth row is 4. The last number in the index is 7, so the y value is 7. Now instead of entering static numbers like that for the row and column arguments of this function, we are going to use x map and y map, so an index of 0 to 7 will be used for those values depending on where the joystick is moved to. The boolean state refers to if the LED is switched on or not. We use true for on and false for off. Now when we move the joystick, each index value on the display is lighting up depending on where we've got it moved to. Look at us absolute geniuses, able to detect if we've already been hit by something and able to avoid being hit by something. I think we got this spaceship thing down.